Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Life Learning. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at um, this um, example. I'm actually starting to study some of the example of the OSL at the fanza.com and this is one of the the basic example in and the concept is basically to color based on height and if you go to the fanza.com and find this uh, example from basically from their OSL example um, which is this one example script open shading language for Maya and then we have uh, color by height okay here the, um, the idea is basically if you have like a um, bunch of objects in the scene and you want to different give it a different color but it's based on the height and it's you can see this is kind of like a ramp um, you can do that using OSL OSL is, a, is an open shading language. Um, Cycle has one, Pixar Random one, Pixar Random one has one, and then there's some like a specific OSL used by Sony Image Picture Works. Um, but anyhow, from this example, you can actually just copy paste, and if you go to a Blender and use the Random Man renderer, you simply copy paste the script and then and then use it in the node like uh, this one Pixar OSL, you just simply specify the text and then refresh the OSL node and you get this node and the node um, that's being built is very similar to what you have seen in Spreadshop or animation nodes in the, in the, this, in the OSL script itself you, you can see there's um, like a specification for the input and the attributes and the output and then all these functions that comes with it so anyway I give it a try and I can get a result in this case it's a uh, I'm using the height in the z-axis here um, I set the local origin to use the second index which is the XYZ the z-axis and based on that just ramp give a color colorations of the objects based on that I kind of want to use the same idea but in the using um, animation nodes so I came out with something like this one so here you can see it's a uh, random boxes they are all scattered and let me reduce the number, make it 10. So whatever below the floor get the red color and whatever above gets a blue color. And that's because of this uh, mix color and and the and, a, and a, uh, based on the basically I'm looking at the position of each cube and based on that I give it a color. Um, I'm basically looking at the vector positions and then based on the height, this is the Z axis which is the vector for this mix color give the color for the objects and let me play this and you can see what's interesting here is like um, even though the objects are changing position they are keeping the same value that's because the, the colorations um, just look at the original position of the objects while the one that's animating um, we don't we don't pipe in the value that's changing into the color otherwise we're gonna have like a the changing color if, for example if I just pipe in the animated color you see now the objects are actually changing color depending on the position whether it's above the floor or below the floor uh, we don't want that sometimes you might you might actually want that but in this case um, the colorations is based on their original positions while they can be animated later but that original position give them the color that they will keep 
uh, throughout the animations and the same idea I apply to sapling you see this is a um, this is a procedural tree that you know it's a uh, created using the sapling um, add-on it comes with blender actually just turn turn it on in the in this preference add curve sapling tree generator and then you just simply um, tap sapling add tree and you can start building your tree um, I think in here I'm just using the bevel and actually let me start from scratch and do the sapling thing okay that's the default looking tree I just give it a bevel and just turn on the leaves and this is what we get and just increase the size of the leaf so this is what, what I'm using and as an example and go back to my setup here you can see the leaves has been colorized using animation nodes and that's dependent on the height the positions of the leaves um, from bottom to top and the way I set it up is simply by just by looking at their original positions see basically here I have the group of the leaves that all I already um, set up beforehand you see it's a uh, all the leaves are all separate objects and I group them together and I bring it into animation nodes here for every leaves object I'm basically checking their original position their initial transform and from their original position I'm separating the vector XYZ position and just look at the Z axis uh, the Z position with the Z position I'm doing I'm using this uh, map range and then kind of checking out what's the exact um, height here the bottom and the top is uh, it's around 8 and 20 apparently because I'm kind of eyeballing it and okay that's kind of right and then using map range I map the value into 0 to 1 and then the value goes into this mix color and simply here we can use um, any color to do the color ramp maybe for leaves we really want to have like a green color and a bit yellow if it's like autumn or maybe a little bit red something like that we can still control the gradient based on the height here okay that's uh yeah that's basically the idea here that i want to come across it's actually inspired by this example color by height so there are other example it's actually for the osl um, if you are using renderman or using cycles and the osl scripting you can easily um, colorize objects this way um, depending on your need sometimes you really just uh, use particles for this but uh, it's really nice because you can just apply maybe like physics to it and then um, in here in my setup actually for the anime for the animation um, I'm using the vector wiggle so if I increase the vector wiggle now they're starting to wiggle in the airs it's a bit weird it's kind of like a kind of like a like a flock of birds it's not like it's not very realistic but it's a, just an example the color you see the color stays with it it's each objects each of the leaf maintain the color that we assign it um, using the original initial position while the animations can do the rest um, really in reality even even though you are not using simulations like graffiti or dynamics physics you can kind of simulate the physics um, using procedural way here uh, perhaps 
maybe if 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 later on um, if Sverdchok developer decided to make like a physics built in in Sverdchok, you can actually do that already. Um, but we will see. Um, in this case, I'm just using a vector wiggle just to 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 give random motions to to the leaves. And if if I I'm done with it, I can zero it out and make the leaves back to the original position. It's the color that I'm just uh, want to talk about actually. This way we can colorize objects based on the height. It's a quite an interesting uh, interesting concept in itself. It's rather super basic but still if you're like a beginner this should be useful for you because you can kind of see what's going on um, yes and the color see the coloration itself is totally separate from the animations that's why that's why we have this uh, thing working for us just make sure that if you want to do this you have the initial transform for each object and you already set the origin to the center of the object in this case Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this um, example. Hopefully you find this useful. Um, you can leave any comments, um, feedbacks, and suggestions down below. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.